You know, my parents once told me about this mythological item. I never thought I'd see it, but I found one. It's called a book, an actual paper book. Now, I think most of you would agree that we pretty much tend to spend too much time on electronic devices. At least that's how I felt. And I thought, you know what? I want to read a book. And I stumbled across this one day and thought it would be a good read for me. And so this is the Prepare for Anything Survival Manual put out by Outdoor Life. It's authored by Tim McWelch. And there's a whole bunch of different skills and ideas in here that, you know, I thought it would be good for me, at least to take a look see what is covered in this book, and see how I can apply some of these principles to my everyday life and gain additional outdoor skills. So as I went through this book, it is just chock full of great ideas, great information, some projects to try. And so I've gone through this and come up with a list of the best of the best, different things that I think will help me improve different things that I'm kind of already doing, but I can refine it. And I thought I'd start to share some of these ideas and these different projects with you. And so today, it's the first one. All right, so this is section 14, make a fire kit. It says, fire building is one of those skills that can make or break you in a survival situation. With so much riding on your ability to produce flame, it makes a lot of sense to plan for your own success by building a dedicated fire starting kit. It's easy and fun to do, and you'll probably already have all the stuff lying around the house. The three basic parts of this kit are the container, the heat ignition sources, and the fuels. Note that the last two are plural. You're going to want some extra insurance in the form of multiple fire starting implements and several fuels. So the first part of the kit, the container. This says the container can be anything that's watertight and easily transported. This can range from a small pelican case or a similar waterproof box to a small wide mouth plastic bottle or even a zip top freezer bag. So for my container, I tried various different sizes and shapes of pretty much Maxpedition pouches. But when it was all said and done, one of these pouches set itself aside from all the rest. I built my kit out of the Maxpedition Anemone Compact Utility Pouch. Now you'll notice that one of the first criteria that I read in the book was that the container should be watertight. Of course, when you look at this right now, you'd say, well, that failed already. Well, I'll tell you this. I agree that the container is not watertight, but there's a good amount of this kit and I'll show you as we go through it, that is watertight. Now I built this kit in an effort to give me a ton of different fire making options. This to me is pretty comprehensive. It's completely chock full of various tinder and ignition sources that'll really allow me to get a fire going in a number of different scenarios, different weather conditions. And you know, more than anything else where I'm learning right now, I like to practice and really come to terms with what I'm capable of using, what works well in what situation. So having a comprehensive kit right now is very advantageous while I'm in the learning stages. This does have some weight to it, but you'll see that there are components within this kit that I can take out of here and use standalone if I wanted to bring it on more of like a backpacking trip or something where I didn't want all this weight. Now at this point, I've pulled out all the contents out of this anemone pack. And I'm kind of breaking it down right now into a couple of main components. So this is more of like the ignition source side of things. And this is more of the tinder side of things. Now inside this little Altoids kit, um, it does have some ignition sources as well. So um, it's not entirely all tinder, uh, but it is primarily. So that's why it's on this side. So you'll see multiple ways of um, igniting the fire and multiple tinder sources. 
Ignition. At a minimum, your kit should include a lighter, a box of matches, and a spark rod. The lighter is the best of the bunch for most fire building situations. The open flame can be used to dry out damp tinder and kindling, catching it ablaze without much trouble. There really isn't a situation in which matches are a better ignition source than a lighter, but I like the matchbox for redundancy and for the fact that those matchsticks can double as kindling. Lastly, the spark rod will serve as an indestructible backup ignition source. It won't light the variety of materials that matches and lighters will, but it will work when the lighter and matches have failed. Now for the most part, most of this is pretty straightforward. I mean, you'll see here just pretty obvious is a nice size ferro rod, nice thick stocky size. I picked this one because it fit the pack the best. Obviously any size would do, but uh, for me I picked this particular one just because it fit nicely in the kit. Here I have a Zippo lighter. Now it's not a typical Zippo inside. I have a butane torch. So this is a little bit upgraded from your typical Zippo. Good thing is that there's less ability for the lighter fluid to actually evaporate out of it because it is a nice contained unit. I like the torch idea because it is a super hot flame. It's pointed. It allows it to work better in windy conditions and just gives me a little bit better of a flame source than a typical Bic lighter. But even at that, for now, I do have a Bic lighter. Reason being, like I told you, I built this kit in an effort to practice. I built it in uh, an effort to have multiple different sources that I'm using, um, different ignition sources and different tinder sources, and then um, just to practice. So having a Bic lighter is definitely a solid tool and something that most people can get their hands on regularly. This case here is an Exotac waterproof matches case. It does have a gasket, so like I was saying before, even though the actual carry system I have isn't completely waterproof, I do have waterproof components. And you'll see here that this is a gasketed case, so it is capable of holding these nice and dry. It has a striker built into it and some really nice uh, weather resistant matches. So this is a pretty solid setup. Um, you know, I, I tend to use a lighter or a ferro rod more than I do the matches. But again, where this is a kit where I'm experimenting, practicing, and want to have some redundancy, this to me is a perfect addition to this nice little kit. It's not always about using a fuel source um, such as matches or lighter or even a ferro rod to light a fire. Maybe sometimes you want to experiment and try to use the sun. Here I have a glass, magnifying glass. This I thought would be pretty good to put in my kit for two reasons. One is because obviously you get the magnifying glass and two is this has tweezers so it kind of serves a dual purpose. I thought maybe even two if I wanted to I could hold some real fine tinder inside these tweezers while I'm holding it and try to get the light adjusted to the point where it actually lights it on fire. So I thought this would be kind of useful and I added it to the kit. In a similar fashion here I have a Fresnel lens. It's actually a two-stage lens. It has a larger diameter circle and a smaller diameter circle. Both are capable of providing different magnification. And at the same time, this actually has a little light on it. So it kind of serves a dual purpose if I needed to read something at night or take a look at something. Kind of gives me another reason to carry this. Fuel. Dry cotton balls, dryer lint, or gauze can take the role of tinder your initial fuel for fire. I also like a candle nub and a tube of petroleum jelly. The candle can be lit and used as a fire starter by itself, or the wax can be dripped onto the tinder or kindling for a wet weather fire boost. The petroleum jelly can be smeared onto the cotton balls to make long burning fire starters, plus the jelly is helpful for a number of first aid and survival chores. You could pre-assemble the petroleum jelly cotton balls, but the summertime heat can cause the jelly to melt and seep through all but most watertight containers. Melted jelly has ruined enough boxes of matches for me that I now carry the tightly sealed tube and the cotton balls separately. Now getting into the tinders. This here is a tin that I carry in an effort to make 
char cloth. Now inside you'll see I do have other items, but the tin that you see I use to make char cloth all the time. And in fact, you'll notice if you take a look at one of my prior videos, um, I have been making char cloth and I found that it is a very, very suitable and excellent, easy to ignite tinder source. So uh, to me, having char cloth is almost essential. And so other than carrying this, I carry this little Mentos container where after I make the char cloth, I fill this thing up. And so I can get my actual char cloth making tin empty and I can use this either to carry a few things or um, it's useful while I'm actually making the char cloth and I have this set in the fire. At least I have a place where all my tinder that I'm making goes. Inside this tin, right now, you'll see, I just have a couple items. These are trioxane. I also have a video on using trioxane. At some point, you should take a look. It's pretty interesting. Now, this is military grade fuel. Um, it's been around for decades. Uh, this fuel itself could very well be decades old. It will dry out if you take it out of its package. So leave it in its package for sure. But I have a couple of these just because they're good, hardy fuel sources, capable of getting a fire started really, really easy in wet conditions or any conditions for that matter. And so for me, to carry a couple of these tabs in my kit is definitely a plus. Now this Altoids tin here is kind of in a way like the heart of my kit. This to me could be completely standalone. If I had to, I could take this and only this and have plenty of materials and um, ignition sources to work with. So um, in that regard, I wanted to make sure that this was pretty well waterproof. I've used some electrical tape to really seal this off well. And so if you look at it here, this as a standalone kit is pretty much a do it all kit. You'll see when I tape this up, I left myself a little pull tab just to get it started. So if I need to get this unwrapped, very simple to do so. And now let's examine the contents. There's a lot of great items in this little kit. And as I mentioned, I built this to try to be standalone. So let's just go through it. First is I have some chapstick. It's basically to replace the idea of a petroleum jelly. And these are petroleum based products. And so there's a number of reasons why this is useful. It provides an additional ignition source. I can use this to smear over these pads or cotton balls if I need to, in order to create a slightly weatherproof tinder. So a little stick of chapstick seemed to make sense to me. These are just some cotton pads that I stole from my wife. These are certainly capable of being lit alone or if I wanted to, I could use them in combination with the chapstick. I would probably pull these apart. The inside is a little fluffier, so I would rip these up, pull them apart, fluff them out a bit before I used them. I have four of them in here and they fit nice and flat. So to me, these are a little bit better than a typical cotton ball, especially if you take a little bit of time to process them before you try to light them. You'll see here, I just have some jute twine. Now this can be completely unraveled and it can be feathered out quite a bit, just taking all the little strands and pulling them apart and creating a nice big nest. This amount of jute is all you need to get a fire started. It's super dry and it's super flammable. And in a pinch, you actually have some additional cordage with you if you needed it. Next in line, you'll see I have a combination magnesium block and ferro rod. Now this magnesium is flammable. It burns super hot. So what you do is you shave pieces of the block off into your tinder bundle when you're trying to light the fire. And this stuff will catch super hot and help you at least boost the fire and hopefully get it going, even if it is in wet conditions. Having the ferro rod in a standalone container is definitely helpful. So if I did need to take my Altoids tin kit with me, at least I'd know that inside I had a suitable ignition source. I have a candle. This could be used for a couple things. If I could get this lit, I could use it as a source to hit multiple locations on my fire, trying to get it started from multiple angles. I could basically insert this into the middle of my chapstick make a little stand up candle if I needed something to see. 
it's just useful to have something like this. I mean, a little bit of wax if you needed it. So many reasons why having a little candle is definitely a bonus. I included some cotton swabs for a couple of reasons. One is if I had to uh, maybe um, apply some ointment or something like that, or you know maybe uh, use my chapstick to you know dress a wound or something like that. I could certainly use these. Uh, they're cotton. They're flammable. The stick is suitable tinder, so they don't take up a lot of space. And I thought these would be a good addition to put in this little Altoids container. I've included three stormproof matches. I could probably get a couple more in this kit if I'm careful, but uh, you know, stormproof matches, like I said before, definitely a good ignition source. And at that, I've actually glued some strikers on the inside of the cover to make sure that I'm able to strike these no matter what. I've added three alcohol prep pads. These are definitely flammable. Obviously, alcohol is a flammable substance. So these are a real good tinder to get a fire started. Definitely, if you're trying to spark the ferro rod and get something to catch, these will catch pretty easy, and then you can start to ignite all the rest of your sources if you had to. So having these that are nice and flat and sit easily inside this kit is definitely a good addition. And finally, I cut some sheets of paper to size to fit in the bottom of this tin. They can be easily crumpled up and turned into suitable tinder. I could use them to write if I had to, obviously, in a situation if I really needed to. But the main intention is just to have some paper that's nice, fits in the bottom of the system, good and flat, and can be crumpled up and made into a nice tinder if I need it. And last but not least, in a similar fashion, this is just some napkins that, again, I've cut to size so they fit nice and flat in the bottom of the kit. And obviously these two would have the ability to catch an ember or a spark off of my ferro rod and help me get the fire started. So the main reason why I chose this Maxpedition Anemone is because it has a nice open design that allows me to slide my Altoids kits nicely in here. The external pocket definitely works well. I like the clip pocket in the front. It has these little elastic loops and even a little sleeve. It's hard to see, but there's a nice little sleeve inside here for my ferro rod. The back is Molly compatible and I added one of these clips so I can clip this to a bag or a belt. So this really is a nice little compact system that has a ton of space exactly the way I need it. Now I'll just package this thing back up and you can see how it came together. There you go. All right. So there you have it, guys. A cool little kit based on the ideas that I found in this book, Prepare for Anything Survival Manual by Outdoor Life and authored by Tim McWelch. Definitely pretty cool. I mean, I like making kits in general. I usually enjoy it. Um, it's, you know, one of the things that really makes you focus on your equipment, figure out what you're going to bring and how you're going to use it. So it makes you really think the most. So it's nice to have the time to do it, taking a minute to sit back, relax, enjoy a book for once. Definitely pretty cool. Well, all right, guys. I hope you like what you saw. I hope you found it a little bit informative. If you like what you saw, please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for stopping by. Take care now. I'll see you soon.